Now, even though I think most of us have long since come to the realization or acceptance that when it came to the Star Wars sequel trilogy, there was no real plan for any of it, that they were just winging it as they went or with each individual episode or movie, instead of, you know, sitting down and having a solid game plan in place for the whole thing beforehand, we now have confirmation, at least when it comes to Rey's lineage, that they really didn't know who her parents were going to be, and that the plan not only changed multiple times, but that it was still in flux during the filming of Episode 9. And this lovely little piece of info actually comes to us from Daisy Ridley, or Ray herself, who was on the Jimmy Kimmel show last night, which was actually being hosted by Josh Gad for whatever reason. I don't know. I don't watch those late night talk shows. Anyway, when asked if she knew all along who Ray's parents were, she had this to say. No, at the beginning they were toying with an Obi-Wan connection, and then it went, there were different versions, and then it really went to she was no one. And then it came to episode 9, and JJ pitched me the film, and oh yeah, Palpatine's granddaddy, and I was like, awesome. And then two weeks later, he's like, oh, we're not sure. So it kept changing, so even as we're filming, I wasn't sure what the answer was going to be. Okay, so there's a lot to take away or unpack here, but first, and I really don't say this to be an ass to anyone, but if you're somehow still clinging to the idea that there was an actual plan and solid cooperation and or a shared vision between J.J. Abrams and Ryan Johnson, it's time to let that go. These two guys did not see eye to eye, and clearly J.J. liked or planned the idea all along that Ray would be related to somebody, with apparently Obi-Wan being one such option or choice at some point, but then Ryan Johnson came in and decided she would be nobody in The Last Jedi before J.J. came back to do Episode 9 and decided to make her somebody again, though apparently even while filming was going on, which may just confirm all the rumors about there being many major issues going on behind the scenes or that the story was constantly changing, there seemed to be doubt about who that was to the point where even Daisy Ridley wasn't entirely sure at times who her parents would turn out to be. But anyway, let's circle back to Rey being a Kenobi for a second. She said they considered it at the beginning, but what exactly does she mean by beginning? Does she mean back when they were first coming up with the story for The Force Awakens? Was it one such option on the table they never actually went with? Or when she says beginning, is she referring to the beginning of the trilogy and The Force Awakens itself? Is she saying that within the context of just that movie, she was meant to be a Kenobi? Was that the idea that was implemented, but then got ignored in the subsequent movie? And the Rey Kenobi theory was one I always liked in concept. I liked the idea of Luke now training a Kenobi where he had once, briefly anyway, been trained by a Kenobi himself. But I never thought there was all that much evidence to support it in the movie or in The Force Awakens. One of the main pieces of evidence people often liked to cite back then was that in Rey's Force vision, Obi-Wan says to her, these are your first steps but I always thought that was more likely to be evidence pointing at her being a Skywalker since Obi-Wan told Luke these are your first steps back in A New Hope. And to me, the only piece of evidence I thought might really point at her being a Kenobi is when she handed Anakin's old lightsaber to Luke, when she handed him his father's lightsaber just like Obi-Wan once had. And the funny thing is I don't even know why I'm talking like or calling any of this evidence like it could all have been pieced together and figured out beforehand when it was nothing of the sort. The Force Awakens was never a mystery for us fans to possibly solve. It was more like a problem left to Ryan Johnson to address, the problem of what do I do with this story left to me by this other guy. Though of course, there's every chance, and it even seems likely considering what Daisy Ridley said here, that there was some sort of plan or vision that J.J. Abrams had, and that, for better or worse, it got completely ignored by Ryan Johnson. And look, love or hate any or all of the sequel trilogy or the people behind it, I'm still curious to know what J.J. Abrams would have done with Episode Eight, what his plans were for Rey, Snow, why Luke was on the island, and so on. And no, I'm not saying they would have necessarily been great ideas, or that he had absolutely everything figured out, but I'd have to imagine or hope that he at least had some ideas and that they would have at least been consistent. And yes, I know some will argue that all J.J. Abrams knows how to do is to create a mystery box. He doesn't know how to open them and reveal what's inside, at least in an intriguing way. And I also know some people out there really do enjoy The Last Jedi. But especially here in hindsight, with the whole trilogy now done, of course, I just wish the sequels had at least been coherent and made sense. I wish there could have at least been a solid underlying story in there somewhere. 
Not unlike how the prequels maybe weren't exactly the best executed movies ever, but at least there's a great story to them, and some fantastic lore and world building to be had as well. But the sequels had none of that. The story's not only bad and inconsistent, but what world building and lore it does have tends to only conflict with what's been established before, not add to it. And as I always say, it's fine if you like the sequels, I have no beef with you. But from my point of view, they had virtually no redeeming qualities, at least or especially when looking at the greater story of Star Wars that they were supposed to, of course, be a part of. Which again goes right back to having no idea what they were doing with the story from the very start, not sitting down and figuring out what the purpose of these movies, short of making money off of them, is even meant to be. Again, especially in terms of what they mean to the story of Star Wars overall. Because, in case they hadn't noticed or thought about this, but the ending of Return of the Jedi was damn near perfect in almost every respect, from the beautiful way it concluded Anakin's story, to the decisive victory of the Rebel Alliance over the Empire, to the seemingly very definitive defeat and destruction of the Sith, and the implication that Luke Skywalker would now go on to rebuild and guide a new Jedi Order. And the sad thing is, the sequel trilogy basically does all of that all over again, only much worse, or in a less interesting way, and with generally less intriguing and well-fleshed-out characters. I mean, the sequels end with the completion of Ben Solo's story, the victory of the Resistance over the First Order and the Sith Fleet, as well as the destruction of all the Sith this time, and the implication that Rey was going to be the one to start and guide a new Jedi Order. Basically, the story and ending is the exact same, but the names have all been changed. And look, it's not like before they started the sequels, they needed to have every single little detail of the story planned out ahead of time. And even if they did have most of it planned, it's not like there isn't room to change or enhance ideas or to go in other directions entirely if something just isn't working. Or maybe throughout the course of writing and telling and filming the story, it just naturally flows in a different direction and you let it go where it takes you. But when you're literally filming the final movie of the trilogy and going back and forth about the lineage of your main character, there's a big problem. Especially when the first movie implied she might be something special, or related to someone from a previous part of the story, and then the second film flat out tells us she's nobody. Only to have the third film be like, just joking, she really is somebody. But not just somebody, but the granddaughter of a failed clone of Palpatine. But you'd have to read the novelization to know all that. Anyway, I don't want to keep going on and on about this yet again. As I said at the top, this really isn't so much shocking news as it is confirmation of something I think most of us have long since come to know and accept. That there was never really a plan that they were following. That the sequel trilogy was more like two guys fighting a custody battle over a story, pulling it in whatever direction they thought was best for them while they had it, and ignoring what the other guy had wanted. Well, that's all I've got for you this time. Now it's your turn to tell me what you think of what Daisy Ridley had to say. Does this surprise you at all that there was no set-in-stone story for Rey and her lineage? Or had you long since figured that out by just watching the movies? Whatever the case may be, leave a comment below and let's talk some Star Wars. And until next time, thanks for watching.